So we have a lot of medications available for the treatment of hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetes, uh, 12 different classes of medications available in the U.S. and prioritizing their order of use um, is an ongoing conversation. If you don't have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or multiple risk factors, then you enter an entire kind of nebulous space of um, you can choose almost anything you want. And depending on what your priorities are and patient preferences, um, you can choose any number of therapies that have been proven both effective at lowering glucose and at least reasonably safe. But once you get into the cardiovascular domain or advanced kidney disease domain, that equation changes and very clearly, and it's endorsed across the, across the uh, Atlantic, is that um, SGLT2 inhibitors and or GLP-1 receptor agonists take precedence. Um, if you have Primarily atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, they're relatively similar in the recommendation. Choose one or the other one, depending on your, pre your preference of the patients. If you have heart failure and or advanced kidney disease, as the EGFR allows, SGLT2 is clearly the preferred therapy to start with. All of this on the background of the endocrinology community still endorsing metformin as a first-line therapy. From a cardiology perspective, I don't think that's necessary any longer. If you have a clear indication for these cardiovascular risk mitigating therapies. My approach is to start one of them. If you still need blood glucose control, start the other one. And then on both of these two medicines, if you still need additional glucose control, then metformin and certainly is the next drug I, 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 I choose. But um, the reality is I can get a lot of people well within their therapeutic target for glucose control just with an SGLT2 inhibitor and a GLP-1 receptor agonist. And so that mitigates the need for the metformin or any other additional glucose-lowering medications.